How's it going, everybody? Welcome into the Pack a Day podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. Today, I'm going to be going through 12 bold predictions for this upcoming season. Before I get there, I do want to talk injuries just a little bit. Packers practiced on Monday. Matt LaFleur spoke beforehand and talked about Zadarius Smith and how he was hopeful that he was going to practice in individual drills and practice throughout this week. Well, we saw that first part come to fruition, and he did, in fact, practice in individual drills on Monday. So that was a really really great sign for Zadarius Smith. You know, no guarantee, of course, that he plays this upcoming Sunday against the Saints. It's a kind of, I'm sure, a wait and see approach, especially to see how his back kind of responds to practice this week. But as of right now, you have to absolutely love seeing Zadarius Smith back at practice in any capacity. And then, you know, the the other good news here is that the only player who wasn't practicing that's on the active roster was Vernon Scott. So as far as health goes, you know, you're obviously still missing David Bakhtiari, who's on that pup list. But as far as players on the active roster, as far as health goes right now, we'll see, you know, pending Zedaria Smith. But if he's all of a sudden able to go, you, know, you could be looking at only Vernon Scott out that week one. And again, there's no guarantee there either. Maybe he's back later this week. But as of right now, Vernon Scott, the only player who is not practicing on Monday. So that's a great sign for Green Bay's health going in to this upcoming uh, week one matchup with the Saints. And I think you know, it's at least worth slightly discussing here, right? So there's always that debate in preseason with Matt LaFleur, you know, he doesn't really play his guys in preseason. Is that detrimental to the team? Like we haven't seen that, right? He's gone 13 and three in two seasons. Like they've gotten off to fast starts. They have yet to lose two games in a row under Matt LaFleur. They have a veteran team who knows how to get the job done on Sundays. I think it's way better to start off, way better to start off, you know, with, um, you know, with a healthy roster, especially with a war of attrition that's upcoming in a 17 game schedule. I just think it makes so much more sense to make sure your guys are healthy. And that's what they've been able to accomplish, knock on wood, so far. Again, pending Z, of course, Bakhtiari still out via uh, on, on the pup list, but that's nothing they, you know, he could have done this season differently. So I think he deserves a lot of credit for his approach and how he's gotten the teams ready to, to play uh, while also keeping them healthy. Really, really great job on Matt LaFleur. All right, let's jump into my 12 bold predictions. Now, uh, whether you like, love, hate, disagree with any of these, probably a good point to point out. Uh, I don't have any sort of ability to see into the future. Uh, so, you know, the good ones, unfortunately, the bad ones, I guess, fortunately. Uh, but I'm going to do my best to try to predict some happenings this upcoming season. So without further ado, here are my 12 bold predictions for the Green Bay Packers this upcoming season. Number one on my bold prediction is that the Packers are going to start out 7-0 and on the season. Now, there's definitely some tough games in that first seven. I think if you look at the overall schedule, at least on paper, I think the first seven is much easier uh, than the last 10. And I think you're going to see, you know, really some, some difficult games towards the middle of that schedule. But I think they have the opportunity to start seven and oh. I think you're going to see some new quarterbacks in new places. You know, of course, you know, you've got Ryan Fitzpatrick with Washington. Um, you know, you've got Jared Goff in Detroit. You've got Jameis Winston. I know he was there, but now as the starter in New Orleans, I think Green Bay is going to be able to get off to a hot start. I think their offense is going to carry them through the first part of that schedule. And I think they're just better than the teams that they're going up against. It's not to say, especially, you know, that game against San Francisco in San Francisco, we've seen how Green Bay has struggled in San Francisco. It's not to say they couldn't lose some of these games, but I think they're going to start seven and oh and then you get to that middle part of the schedule at Arizona at Kansas City versus Seattle at Minnesota versus the Rams like that is a tough tough middle part of the schedule but I think hopefully knock on wood that they're going to get off to a strong start and again my prediction is they are going to start seven and oh Next up on my list, number two, is that Adrian Amos is going to have the best season of his career. And I've sort of alluded to this in the past that Adrian Amos is always in the right spot. He's a sure tackler. He is, he's just everywhere you want him to be as a coach at all times. He knows uh, you know, he knows the schemes. He knows where his teammates are. He knows how to play off of his teammates. I think with Darnell Savage coming into his own more, that's going to help Adrian Amos out even, even more than we saw in the last couple seasons. We've seen him in practice, spend a lot of time in that nickel dime linebacker role. So I think he's going to have a very integral role within this defense. He is due for a few you know, balls just to bounce his way, get a couple more interceptions than he usually does. I think this is going to be the standout season in Adrian Amos's career, and I think he's going to have the best season of his pro career. Number three, maybe not so bold. Maybe I'm uh, taking the easy way out on this one, but Robert Tunyon will make the Pro Bowl. And 
to be fair, why it's maybe not such a bold prediction, you know, arguably could have made it a season ago, certainly should have made it over Evan Ingram, who made it in for the Giants. Definitely had a better season than he did. But as I've mentioned, Robert Tunyon has arguably been the MVP of this offseason. Certainly how he's looked in training camp. He's literally caught everything thrown his way. He looks quicker. He looks more determined. Uh, he looks more confident. Like it just, it looks like it's all come together for Tunyon. And I know there's a lot of mouths to feed within this offense, but I think he is once again going to have a huge role within the red zone. And if he stays healthy, fully expect him to make a run to the Pro Bowl this season. Number four is Rashawn Gary, and I believe he will lead the team in sacks this season. A little bit of a bold prediction there, right? You've got Zedarius and Preston right alongside of him at that edge rusher position. You know they're going to rotate those guys, and hopefully if, if he's healthy, Zedarius is going to get a ton of snaps. You know that. You've got Kenny Clark inside. I think you feel pretty confident, right, that none of the defensive linemen are probably going to lead. You know, Maybe Kenny Clark could have a breakout season as a pass rusher, but probably not going to happen for any defensive linemen. So Ultimately, it probably comes down to Z, Rashawn Gary, and Preston Smith, and it being one of those three. Maybe Kingsley Kiki could, you know, get to a, like a 10 sack season, something like that, if, if everything really went his way, maybe lucked into a couple. But I, I think there's there's probably not a, a ton of options here. But I do think, you know, was it Aris's injury? You know, we saw Preston maybe come down to earth a little bit last season. I know he does every other year if you look at his stats, but I think Rashawn Gary's going to get more playing time and it is time for him to see that potential through and really become the guy on this Packers defense. He has all the ability. He has all the effort and want to. Now it's just taking that that raw talent and turning it into skill, turning it into production and being, again, the guy as the pass rusher on this Packers defense. I think he starts to become that and I think he leads the team in sacks defensively. Number five on my list, Royce Newman is Pro Football Focus's top rated rookie offensive lineman. Royce Newman had a, you know, when I when I look at draft prospects, what I always try to identify are quote unquote superpowers. Is there something that this prospect can do that is is something very unique that most players don't have and is going to help them win on Sundays. Royce Newman had that with his get off at the line of scrimmage. It is a combination of quick feet. It is a combination of, of snap timing. So just knowing exactly when to get off the ball and then just overall quickness and getting to his spot. And there are multiple times, if you remember when I talked about this on my Royce Newman film breakdown after I watched him on tape, there are mul multiple times where he's getting to his spot basically almost before the defensive lineman's up out of it, like out of his stance. Like, and now all of a sudden you have the ability to wall your defender, get your hands up quicker. Like it just puts you at such an advantage as an offensive lineman. And that, that trait, that superpower, if you will, has translated over to the NFL so far, at least what we've seen in training camp and preseason. We'll see if it continues. And there's, there's so much more to that, right? You can't just have quick feet and a good get off. Like you have to hold up at the point of attack. You have to be mentally strong to be able to pick up blitzes where players are coming coming from and everything like that. So there, there's a lot more to it than that, but that skill in and of itself has given Royce Newman a huge advantage. I think it's going to play a huge part in his development. And I think he's going to be the number one rated offensive lineman rookie this year on Pro Football Focus. Number six, I am going to say that the Packers go 6-0 and in their division. Not exactly a barn burner of a division. Minnesota seems to be stuck in neutral a little bit with Kirk Cousins. Andy Dalton's the current starter for the Bears. You've got Justin Fields waiting in the wings, and that's certainly going to happen at some point this season. I would expect there to be some growing pains with Justin Fields as well, as well as some, some wild plays and some highlights as well, but I think there's going to be growing pains that go along with that. And then uh, you know, Detroit, I expect to be a bottom five team in all of football. Division games are always tough. It doesn't matter who's good, who's bad. Those teams are always hard. Those games are always hard fought. Uh, but I think Green Bay is going to come out of this in, you know, in really good fashion with a six and zero record. And what what at times can be a difficult schedule. Again, especially if you look at the middle of the schedule, I think they're going to get some you know, ability to pick up some, not easy wins, but wins nonetheless within the division. And again, ultimately, I think they go six and zero. Number seven is I think at some point this season, Eric Stokes will surpass Kevin King on the depth chart. All indications right now are that is that Kevin King is going to be that number two corner uh, besides Jair Alexander or opposite side of Jair Alexander, if you will. Uh, but I think at some point this season, like let's just take Kevin King, right? I think Kevin King is going to be Kevin King. I think there's going to be games where he looks like a really good starting corner and he teases you with that raw athletic ability and you know his ability to come up and press at the line of scrimmage and his length. I think there's going to be really good games out of Kevin King, just as we've seen throughout his career. 
I think there's going to be some really bad games from Kevin King because that inconsistency is probably going to remain. I think we're still going to see that this upcoming season. I don't think he's all of a sudden going to break out and just not have any bad games anymore. I mean, I think we're probably going to see some Kevin King injuries. We've seen that basically every year of his career. We're just kind of taking what we've seen in every year of his career and extrapolating it to this upcoming season. I think we're going to see the very similar Kevin King that we're used to. I think when we see one of those injuries or if he misses some time, I think Eric Stokes is going to take full advantage of that. And he might not look back. He may gain that starter spot for good. Either way, I expect that to happen at some point this season. Number eight is a little bit of a postseason prediction, if you will, uh, but I'm going to say that Nathaniel Hackett gets a head coaching job this upcoming offseason in 2022. Listen, Nathaniel Hackett's a very bright mind. He is well-versed in the West Coast offense. He now knows this Matt LaFleur offense. He has some Aaron Rodgers uh, and sort of that Mike McCarthy carryover. He has a ton of knowledge of offensive concepts. I think he's been very integral in doing some of the gold zone slash red zone stuff here in Green Bay that's been uber successful. I think he is, you know, does a really good job relating to the, the players on the field and, and making the game enjoyable, but yet demanding at the same time. I think he strikes a really good balance. And I think at some point when the Packers offense keeps being number one in one of the top offenses in football, I think he's going to continue to get looks. And I think at some point in where I think is going to be this off season, I think some team gives him a job. So we'll see where he may end up um, if that ends up being the case, but I think he's certainly deserving. And I think that's going to end up happening this upcoming off season. Number, lo- number nine, excuse me, is that Jordan Love has his Aaron Rodgers Cowboys moment. I'm not talking about throwing a pass to Jared Cook to set up a game winning field goal with Mason Crosby. I am talking about his 2007 Uh, Aaron Rodgers Cowboys moment. Then if you remember, that was the time where Brett Favre went down in uh, the regular season. Aaron Rodgers came in against the Cowboys in Dallas. And that was our real first sign that, hey, something they, they've got something here in Aaron Rodgers, right? It, previous to that, when he had gotten in, in in some garbage duty in regular season games and in preseason, he had not looked good. There was no real confidence from anyone that saw him in game action that he could be the guy. That was the first indication of okay, Green Bay might just have something here because he played really well in that spot appearance, taking over for an injured Brett Favre in that game. I think at some point this season, Jordan Love has one of those moments. Maybe Aaron Rodgers goes out for a couple quarters. Maybe, uh, you know, who knows, right? Maybe it's just garbage time where they're up or maybe garbage time when they're down. But I think at some point, Jordan Love gets in a game and starts showing some of that potential that caused Brian Gutekunst and company to draft him in the first round a season ago. Number 10, last dance. I'm going to go ahead and predict. Don't uh, don't hate on me for this. It's just a prediction. Again, I don't know uh, the future, so we'll see what happens. But I'm going to say Aaron Rodgers, Mason Crosby, Preston Smith, Randall Cobb, and Kevin King at minimum are playing in their last years in Green Bay Packers jerseys. Of course, Aaron Rodgers, the big one here. Listen, Next year's salary cap is going to be a nightmare. I'm not even going to touch base on it now. Nobody wants to hear it now. Nobody cares about it now. That's all things that we'll get to in due time. This is a last dance season. This is a season to enjoy. I think there's going to be a ton of twists, turns, excitement. You know, every injury, win, loss, tie, like all of it's going to feel extremely epic because of how much is riding on this season. Uh, But again, take some time to enjoy those players who are here now because some of them, whether it's some of the players I just named or maybe some of the others, MVS, Devontae Adams, who knows, right? There's going to be a lot of players that are missing in the 2022 iteration of the Green Bay Packers. So take your time to enjoy the ones that you're a fan of now because you just aren't quite sure who may be here in 2022. Again, my prediction, Rodgers, Crosby, Preston, Cobb, and King playing in their last seasons in Green Bay. Number 11, a little bit more of a fun one. Devontae Adams will break Jordy Nelson's uh, receiving record of yards in a season for a Green Bay Packer. Jordy had 1,519 yards in 2014, I think it was. Uh, I'm going to say that Devonta Adams breaks that. Of course, we're probably going to see a lot of broken records this upcoming season uh, with the extra game, both team records and NFL records. Now with 17 games, gives players a, an opportunity to surpass all of those records that were accomplished in 16 games. So record book doesn't you know, put an asterisk next to it. It just is what it is. And I, I think Devonta Adams, if he stays healthy all season long, uh, he is you know, easily in the, the realm of being able to average 100 yards per game, even in an offense that's as loaded as Green Bay's. And I think that'll get him to around 1,600 yards a season, which would easily break Jordy Nelson's record. And last but not least, again, don't hate, just uh, making the prediction here. I'm going to say that the Packers lose to the Chiefs in Super Bowl in the Super Bowl. Um, 
you know, I think Green Bay has every right to compete for a Super Bowl this season. I think they will compete for a Super Bowl this season, whether they get there, lose in the Super Bowl, win the Super Bowl. They have that sort of talent. I think, it, like I said, it's going to be a tremendously fun season. Um, but I think they fall ever so pain, painfully close uh, in the Super Bowl, uh, trying to get you know right over that hump. They finally get through the NFC Championship game, make it to the Super Bowl, and I think the Chiefs get some Super Bowl one revenge and uh, take out the Packers in what should be, if it happens, would be obviously an insanely entertaining Super Bowl. Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes, uh, and that entire matchup I think would be so fun. And of course, we'll get to see that in the regular season as well. All things uh, going according to plan, hopefully. But uh, again, just a prediction as if, if you want some solace in it, uh, go back and look at my 12 bold predictions from last year and uh, not a ton of them hit, uh, hit right in the center of the bullseye exactly. So uh, we'll see what happens. Of course, I'm hoping that that's not the case. I'm hoping that the Packers win the Super Bowl over whoever may be in that AFC slot. But I, again, I think most importantly here, it should be an incredibly fun season. Everything is going to feel so insanely important, and I cannot wait for it to get started. That's going to do it for me today. Thank you so much for joining me. Always appreciate it. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll be right back here tomorrow. But until next time, and as always, Go Pack Go!